The following infomercial is presented by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. All information presented here is all based on science with absolutely no factual errors. Hey, as you may have seen, the world is in chaos. But that's not our concern for today because... In today's episode of Keeping Yourself Safe with Science, we're going to look at the homo necrosis zombies, commonly known as... Zombies. The zombie virus is theorized to be a strain or genetic variant of the infectious disease and virus of rabies. More specifically, it is theorized to be the encephalitic form of rabies. The virus is secreted primarily through the saliva of an infected animal. Once the virus is contracted through the saliva, it quickly travels through the bloodstream, entering the brain, where it attaches to susceptible cells and causing the brain to swell. The virus is therefore found in the nervous tissue of an infected animal. Once in the brain, the virus travels through efferent nerves, shown here in the diagram. Efferent nerves carry impulses away from the central nervous system, in this case, to the salivary glands. And this is why the main form of transmission of the virus is through the saliva of an infected animal. Therefore, anything that an infected animal bites and leaves its saliva on is highly likely to be a major danger hazard. The transition is painful, to say the least. Common symptoms include increases in saliva, muscle spasms, hallucinations, seizures, and aggression. Most of the time, victims of rabies die within a few days from respiratory failure. However, in the cases of those infected with the zombie strain of rabies, a change of identity occurs. It's past to the night, a bird's gonna become a zombie. And the infected, instead of dying, becomes a zombie. Once a zombie is infected, they'll try and spread the disease around because their brain has brought it and they have nothing else better to do. The main way they'll be transferring this virus is through biting. And by biting, the saliva from the zombie's mouth will enter the bloodstream once the skin has been pierced. So, how strong is this bite? By using this machine, we can calculate how much force is exerted per bite. And with that, we find out that using the second molar teeth, you can exert up to 1,100 newtons of force to 1,300 newtons of force. Using the incisors, on the other hand, will give you 362 newtons of force. That's not a lot, you may think, but imagine 362 apples falling onto you at the same time. Now, that's a lot of damage. So, I was looking through this picture fly yesterday, and it amazed me. There's like 50 different um, like outlooks for the thing. Right. I was wondering, maybe Albert might know, so uh, I don't really I know. I mean, we can ask him. Oh, look. Oh, it's Albert right there. Dude, Albert, what are you, like a zombie or something? As a way to combat zombies, lighter objects are much better than heavier objects. So Sophie made the right choice here. Well, why is this? According to Newton's second law, force equals mass times acceleration. Increasing any of these factors will result in a higher force. For instance, we can get a higher force with this bat, because this bat only weighs 0.74 kilograms, or 740 grams. And we can swing it at a fast rate because of its low mass. In our trials, we found out that this bat can swing at 11.4 meters per second squared. So, the acceleration times it with its mass of 0.74 kilograms will give us 8.5 newtons of force per hit. Now, that may not sound like a lot of force per hit, but repeated over and over again, that can cause to concussion and brain hemorrhaging, which could lead to eventual death for these pesky little zombies. Whoa! Seems like Sophie hit that zombie now. Pretty hard. That boy, that boy right there? 
still be the source of infections to come. So let's burn that baby down. Thank you. So luckily, like most living things, viruses are made up of, made up of organic compounds, meaning they can be burned. So each of these four nucleotides that make up DNA can effectively be combusted, as we can see in these equations here. And we can use something as simple as a propane torch or hairspray. Nope. Oh, car, oh, car, stop. And now, a word from our special guest, all the way from Siberia, Dr. Grigory Svanetsky. So how do we stay safe and prevent the spread of the deadly virus? I have to, uh, to go to the lab as soon as I could. The lab was a chaos, the best ideas were flashing and we wanted to burn everything down and just prep to die. But I remembered how my grandma used the coldness to heal us from our flu. She would throw us out of the house in the minus 30 and not let us in until we freeze to the bone. And that's how I thought about hypothermia. You drop the body temperature below 35 degrees Celsius and uh, the body does not function to the extent when the virus can spread and contaminate the others. However, there is a significant negative to this method. The human body is superbly weak when it's exposed to such critical conditions. Such things as muscle contraction, increased urination, and lowering of the production of the insulin rates uh, can be observed. In order to make sure that does not happen, we are applying several resolutions. So where do we go when we save the patient? Our research says, Canada. Why? Because it's a great place with cold weather, you can still grow food, therefore no viruses can multiply, there is not that many population, as well as it's really looking like my hometown in Siberia. In order to become a survivor, you need to register at the Apocalypse Registration Center, and you will have to fill out this form. Uh, we have evaluated the situation and decided who will remain alive. Our researcher group outlined the several groups of people that will be rescued. If you don't get the passage, I'm sorry you did not match our criteria and you will have to survive yourself. We wish you best of luck. Fill it in. Thank you. You see a man, no one knows, no one knows, and I've got hope in my eyes. Please keep me warm. Thank you. With your Here's your boarding pass. Here's your class A pass. Thank you so much. This is the first of overall passengers on stationary wave flight BA0870.
All passengers on flight BA0878, please go to gate 20.